So good morning, everybody. Uh, we are Josie and Shaoqi, and we are very happy to be back here in Hack in Paris this year. Uh, today we will present you the continuation of our research on voice command injection uh, and um, intentional electromagnetic uh, interferences. So we, we work for the French Network and Information Security Agency and we belong to the Wireless Security Lab. Our main focus are on um, electromagnetic threats on information systems, uh, radio communication security, and we also like to uh, look at embedded systems and uh, do some signal processing. So today we'll start with um, a short reminder on um, uh, how voice command interpreters work. Uh, and we will recall the, um, the work we presented uh, at Hack in Paris last year about the, the first um, technique for injecting uh, voice, command in, uh, voice commands uh, into smartphones uh, through the headphones. And then uh, we will present a, <coughs> a new injection technique uh, exploiting um, backdoor coupling. So we will start by presenting our experimental setup and then um, the exploitation uh, stage. And we will finish with a short conclusion. So voice command interpreters um, are um, a user interface uh, which allows the user to uh, interact with uh, his device uh, hands-free, only with the voice. And uh, it's widely deployed in um, a lot of kinds of device. Uh, such as smartphones or uh, smart watches. Uh, all the main uh, editors or uh, phone manufacturers um, develop their own solution. So uh, for Microsoft, it's Cortana. Uh, Apple uh, developed Siri. Uh, Google, uh, it's uh, Google Voice Search, which is integrated into Google now. And uh, the third-party manufacturers uh, that like to uh, um, to deploy a, a proprietary layer uh, on top of the, the operating systems also provide their own solution. So here for the example, it's the Samsung solution, which is called S-Voice. And um, one uh, very interesting point is what you can do uh, with using the voice command interpreters. Uh, you can first um, use communication services so you can uh, place calls, uh, send text messages. You can uh, use uh, internet or connected services. So you can browse the web. You can uh, post and interact on social uh, networks. And uh, you can send emails and so on. You can also do some stuff locally on the phone. Uh, you can launch applications, for example. Uh, you can interact with the, the system and um, Depending on the operating system, you can also uh, personalize or change the, the phone settings. So uh, what's new um, this year um, is that um, you, the editors provide now uh, APIs, or they are starting to do so, uh, to allow third-party uh, application developers to uh, integrate um, and support uh, voice interaction inside their own application. So this widens the, the, the scope um, of what you can do uh, using your voice to interact with your phone. And another interesting feature is the, um, the voice recognition, uh, which can be used and set up to unlock the phone, so to uh, authenticate the user uh, to the phone. A short word on the processing, how it works. So uh, there are bo both um, local processing and remote processing. The um, user, uh, to interact with the voice uh, interpreter, has to pronounce a keyword. Uh, so here in the example, it's OK Google. And this keyword is uh, processed locally on the phone and uh, recognized and detected locally on the phone. It activates the voice command interpreter and then the user can pronounce the command he wants to see executed on the phone. The command is sent to a remote server, uh, which will uh, do the speech recognition, uh, interpret the command, and then 
send the payload to the, to the phone to trigger the command. An important point is the activation of the voice interpreter. Uh, depending on the settings uh, the user chooses, uh, the voice interpreter can be always active, so always listening to the user voice and uh, tracking for the keyword. Or it can also be uh, restricted, and um, in that case, um, the user has to launch the interpreter uh, to be able to interact with the phone by voice. There is a third case. Uh, the user can also usually press a hardware button. So this can be the home button, for example, on the, the iPhones. Uh, and it can also be the, the headphones remote uh, main button. So along with the activation, another important point is the authentication. And the authentication depends uh, on the settings that the user chose. And uh, of course, the, the, the OS, the operating system, and uh, the version of the voice interpreter uh, application. Um, today, um, many um, manufacturers or editors uh, propose the user to use voice recognition uh, to perform the authentication. And we will talk about it uh, a bit later in the presentation. And um, it is possible to limit um, the commands that are available uh, through the voice interface uh, before authenticating the user and after authenticating the user. So for the example here, I, I show you the, the Google settings. So the default setting uh, is not shown here. And um, the, the user can interact with the voice interpreter uh, by launching the Google application or from any screen where the Google application widget is uh, present. But then we see that uh, the user also uh, can choose uh, three other settings, the from any screen setting, which allows the user to uh, use the voice interface when the screen is on or when the device is charging. The always on allows the user to use the voice interface when the screen is on or off on very specific devices. In that case, uh, I think the voice recognition is already uh, implemented or uh, performed, uh, but it's not used for authentication. So if the user wants to access restricted uh, commands, he still has to authenticate uh, through the pin code or uh, whatever the authentication method it shows. And then we have the trusted voice, uh, which is clearly uh, an authentication by voice. So uh, you can say, OK, Google, from a secure lock screen, and they are able to recognize the sound of the voice, and it unlocks the phone. So uh, we wanted to... Um, to discuss, uh, to show some uh, recommendations we proposed last year on uh, voice command interpreters and discuss here with you um, what changed uh, one year later. So the first recommendation we made was to allow the user to personalize the keyword so that it's not always for everyone, OK Google or Hey Siri. Um, and uh, we saw that uh, this feature that was present last year on the phones that we tested uh, is not present anymore, at least on uh, Google and, and, and Siri. Um, it's uh, still present for uh, S-Voice, for example, so it's, uh, I think it's a good thing, because it makes the attack a bit harder for, uh, for an attacker. We also um, asked for being able to choose the available commands, especially the say, sensitive ones, um, and choose if they would be accessible before authentication or after authentication. Um, in that case, the user does not really have the choice, uh, but the editors uh, choose some application for the, the user. So some um, privacy critical commands are uh, restricted and uh, need an authentication or require an authentication, uh, while some other commands like web browsing uh, are available without authenticating. 
Well, we also wanted to uh, limit the critical commands available through the, the voice interface, and uh, this obviously will not be the, the main trend uh, because the editors want to extend the possibilities uh, of this interface. Uh, we suggested to use voice recognition to um, make it harder uh, for an attacker to exploit the voice command uh, interpreters. And in that case, uh, the voice recognition is not uh, really mature. So the feature is uh, available. The user can choose it. Uh, but uh, it's not reliable enough uh, to be satisfying. We recommend it to enable feedbacks uh, and maximize the, the possibilities. So uh, today, when you execute a voice command, generally, you have a sound feedback and uh, a vibration. And this is good for the user to know that uh, uh, a command is, b is being executed. And we also would like to have uh, finer grain settings uh, to be able to choose um, which uh, applications we expose and uh, even which uh, features inside the applications we expose pre-authentication and post-authentication. A word about uh, the security uh, state of the art. Um, we all already covered that last year, so we will only focus on the, the new things. So every year there is an authentication bypass on, uh, on iOS uh, by using Siri. Uh, so uh, this year there were uh, several. The main idea is to uh, use uh, the voice interpreter to uh, um, access an available command that is accessible pre-authentication, and then uh, from inside this uh, application, uh, try to fall back to uh, other applications that are restricted. On the local attacks, there, there has been a very interesting research about uh, using audible commands, uh, playing audible commands to the audio front end of the smartphone, uh, but uh, obfuscating these commands so that the user cannot understand uh, the sound, but the uh, speech recognition engine is able to reconstruct the speech and still execute the command. And of course, we presented last year our uh, technique uh, on a remote and silent voice command injection using smart uh, IEMI, which will be described here now by Shauki, please. Good morning, everybody. Ah. Okay, it's okay, thank you. <coughs> Though last year we presented uh, a remote uh, and silent technique for inducing voice commands into targeted smartphone, I will just start with a, a little sum up of, the, of this talk, just for you to better understand what we did last year and how we work. We, we went further on the technique to, to, to describe a new injection uh, attack vector. Now basically, last year you, you already may have seen this picture. Uh, we were using a transmitting antenna and we were targeting headphones connected to uh, a smartphone. Though basically we were able to induce the electric signal containing audio uh, voice commands and to get them executed by the targeted device. We also presented a different scenario uh, in which we, we may be using this kind of attack vector. So basically the tracking scenario uh, in which we described uh, that we were able to turn on a wireless uh, interface of the targeted device, and then we could be able to check if someone is, is around the, tar the, the, the system to attack the target. Um, eavesdropping a scenario, in which we have shown that we were able to place a, a phone call to a specific number and turning the device into an eavesdropping system. Um, as we were able to place phone calls, we also uh, discussed the cost abuse. So basically, we could also place uh, phone calls to overpaid uh, services. We also talk about reputation and phishing attacks. So basically, if we were, uh, we are able to, to, to send uh, Twitter messages or text messages to anyone, we could make some bad things on the reputation of the targeted uh, guys. Um, some, uh, to, some, we also discussed the malicious uh, app triggering by using specific uh, audio, com audio voice commands and to make this application download uh, some payload uh, 
to, to put some add-ons on this uh, malicious application. We also talk about advanced compromising of the target. So basically, uh, we, we discussed the, the fact that we were able to turn on a wireless interface. And based on this, we could be able to emulate an access point for attacking the Wi-Fi uh, interface of the targeted device. So that was the scenarios we discussed last year. But we also discussed the limitations uh, of the attack presented last year. So basically, um, there were minimum required fields uh, around the target. So it was 28 volt per meter at 100 megahertz. So this means that if we want to build the source to perform the attack of the attack of last year, uh, it required an amplifier of 40 watt uh, for attacking device at two meters. So we may imagine a guy working through a crowded area. Um, and to reach targets at five meters, then we needed an amplifier of 200 watt. So this makes things very difficult to, 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 to use. Though the main limitations of the, of, the, of the test of last year was that it required the headphones to be connected to the smartphone. Um, the distance between the source and the target was limited by the minimal required field. And it also was highly dependent to the activation conditions. So we have shown that we were able to trigger to emulate the hardware press button on the headphone. And also, it's highly impact, impacted by the settings of the users. Though we wanted to check if it would be possible to overcome these limitations and we just decided to go further and try another attack scenario. Um, by reading the descriptions of uh, editors and manufacturers, providers of uh, voice command interpreters, we have seen, interestingly, that you are able to, um, to wake up your smartphones uh, with so the voice commands and the keyword when the device is connected to the power network. So this means that devices, when they are charging, uh, allows the user to interact with it and make some specific uh, command to be executed on the target. So it's for us the target, but it's in its own smartphones. Though this brings us to the topic of today, which is basically um, try to analyze if we could be able to interact with devices through when they are connected to the power network uh, through the USB cable. So this is the target of today. So just a few words uh, to make things uh, clear for you. Uh, there are two propagation modes, so the radiated one and the conducted one. So the radiated one, which one can just imagine a communication between two uh, radio communication systems, so antenna to antenna communication and the conducted propagation um, that you may already use uh, at home for home networking through power line communication systems. So, and we will focus on the conducted propagation mode today. Another thing about intentional electromagnetic interference is we describe two kinds of coupling modes. The first one is when inducing signals into uh, uh, an antenna. We call this so the front door coupling mode. And when we are able to induce electric signal uh, into conductive parts of any electronic device, which is not designed to receive signals, then we call this backdoor coupling. And this is the topic of today. So the propagation mode is the conducted one, and we try to exploit a backdoor coupling phenomena for trying to reach targets. Um, here we have an example of a target, so it's a Samsung Galaxy Nexus. Um, we have the charging port part on the PCB, where we can see on the right the, the point of entry for us, for our uh, parasitic signal, so it's the USB connector. And what we would like is to be able to couple electromagnetic signals uh, by uh, entering the signal into the USB cable, and to reach the microphone IC, which is uh, on the left. So just to remember you what's a USB cable. We all know that you may all know what it is. But we have four wires, two for the power, the red and the black, 
and two for the data transmission, which are the white and which is which are the the white and the green. And what we would like is to um, use the this cable for inducing our signals into the star into the, into the system and then trying to interact with the microphone IC. So there are two phenomena uh, that may occur on the PCB, which are um, the bypass of the v isolation uh, between the two uh, hardware components uh, by parasitic coupling. And also another, another interesting point is that on some PCBs, the two electronic uh, components are sharing the same power network. Um, even if they, they are some uh, isolation components, so conductor and capacitors, but let's try to interact with this. In order to test this uh, backdoor coupling mode uh, attack vector, we need some uh, specific devices. Um, we replaced uh, the antenna with an initiation probe, so on, your le on the left, uh, which is something we can buy on the, on the, on the web. And also, to, we designed a homemade coupler, so it's the power part on the power line communication modems. And we will try to plug this into the power network for testing our injection technique. Uh, the signal injection of last year was uh, highly presented. Uh, I will just go give some, some words about, about that. We placed uh, smartphones with their headphones connected into a Faraday cage for regulation purpose. Uh, we had an application to stream the audio uh, input of the device uh, to a, a streaming to a monitoring computer, and we were generating our signal with a USRP. And we have demonstrated that uh, good uh, coupling frequencies for injecting voice commands into smartphones uh, were in the 80, 100 megahertz frequency band. So we removed uh, the antenna and the headphones, and we connected the devices to the power network with the power charger into the power socket, and we used our injection probe and also our malicious coupler. And we are still using our USRP and trying to reach devices uh, for the power network. And we have seen during the preliminary test that a good coupling frequency was 218 megahertz. So, as we may imagine, injecting signals into the power network, um, the, the electromagnetic interference has to propagate into a, a propagation channel, which is composed of the power cables, the USB chargers, the USB cable, and then the coupling between the USB connector and the audio uh, microphone IC. So as a preliminary test, we wanted to test uh, several USB cables. So we placed the, uh, the targets directly, uh, connecting, di connected directly to the instrumentation for our USRP. And we used, um, you can see here, there are two USB cables. So we compared uh, the USB cable with data link and the power cables, uh, the charge only cables. And we characterized the frequency band, uh, the audio frequency band of coupling on the device. So we are still looking to the signals induced on the target by using a free uh, available application called wireless mic. And we can see here the frequency domain analysis of the induced signal. So comparing the two cables here, you have the, the frequency domain, uh, the spectrogram here. This is the induced signal, which is a sweep, which allows us to estimate the coupling uh, frequency band uh, into the device, uh, composed of the voice frequency band, the audio frequency band, and the ultrasound frequency band. And you have uh, here the two uh, um, frequency response of the cables. And we have seen that depending on the used cable, the audio signal is degraded in different ways. So here we have a, a high, high difference between the effect for the low frequency and also some differences on the highest frequency. 
Then we used our target, we connected our target to the power network. Here we have the power, the, 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 the charger connected to the power network. You have our injection probe and the malicious coupler. And here you can see the, the frequency response uh, when injecting the signal through the power network. So as a, a preliminary result, we had interesting uh, uh, injection uh, results. Basically, we were able to induce audio signal to the power network. Uh, when devices were charging for the low voltage network, we also connected our uh, devices with the USB to a computer. And we have seen that we were also able to induce audio signal through this setup. So then we went, uh, we, we had, so the first question is, um, are those signal interpretable by the voice command interfaces? Um, and another interesting result was that uh, the, the required uh, power uh, for injecting the signal was less than five, uh, 500 uh, milliwatt. And, and the second question is, uh, is it enough to get voice signal interpreted and command executed by the targets? And then Jose will show you the results. So at, at this step of the, of the, the research, uh, we know that we are able to interact with the, the audio input interface of the phone uh, by injecting uh, our uh, parasitic signal in, into the power, the power network. And now the, what, what would be interesting would be to uh, verify if uh, voice command interpreters uh, tolerate the signals that we inject and interpret them as, uh, as commands. So we considered three scenarios and uh, they differ in uh, the, um, the point of injection and the uh, different filters that our parasitic signal will uh, uh, go through uh, to reach the, the target phone. The first scenario is uh, the classical one. The phone is charging to the, through the power network with a, a genuine USB charger. The second scenario is uh, the phone charging on a USB port uh, on a computer, uh, which is uh, connected to the, the low voltage network. And then we uh, imagine the third scenario, uh, uh, direct injection uh, through a malicious USB charging device. Um, which is an interesting scenario because uh, it, uh, um, there are less uh, filters on the, the propagation path between the injection point and the, the, the target audio front end. The first scenario is the, the more, most classical one. Uh, we all have that at home. Uh, we have a USB charger that we connect on the, the power network. And uh, in that case, uh, our parasitic signal we'll have to uh, bypass the transformers that are uh, inside the USB charger and bypass the, the high-pass filters that are in the, in the charger to uh, discard the, the 50 hertz uh, of the, the power network. And of course, we would like to, to know if the, the audio quality is good enough to be processed by the voice command interpreters. So for the demonstration here, we have uh, two setups. Uh, the phone uh, is connected to uh, this uh, power strip uh, with a genuine USB charger and uh, we will inject our parasitic signal whether with a coupler uh, is, uh, on the same uh, power strip or uh, directly uh, inside the, the, into the power strip um, cable uh, with the, our injection probe. So in this video, on the, the power strip, we also have a, a computer uh, connected. And uh, this will allow us to check if the computer is disturbed by uh, our injection or, uh, or not. So we see the setup. And we inject uh, the parasitic signal. The keyword is recognized. And uh, the command, uh, which is uh, Démarrer Gmail or Start uh, Gmail application, uh, is uh, well interpreted by the, the voice command interpreters.
The second scenario is a bit uh, trickier. Uh, the phone is charging through the USB port of a computer, and the computer is connected to the, to the power network. And here, um, the filters, the, the main uh, signal uh, filtering elements are inside the, the computer. So the point, injection, the point of injection is the same as in the first scenario. And uh, the signal will have to bypass the transformers that are inside the computer's power unit and the high-pass filters of that unit. And of course, the same uh, assumption or uh, goal that we want to reach is a uh, good quality so that our command is uh, interpreted and executed. And we don't want to disturb the, the computer. So here. Um, on the right, it's just a picture of the back of the computer, and uh, we highlighted the injection probe and um, the USB cable. So the, the phone is connected to the USB port of the, the computer. And we see that the uh, we are still able to uh, forge a, a parasitic signal, uh, induce it inside the, the power network, and uh, it goes through the, um, the power lines or the, uh, inside the computer and uh, propagates to the, the target phone. <laughs> and the third scenario is the the custom malicious uh, charging device. Uh, so it's a typical scenario where the target will charge uh, its phone on um, an unknown uh, charger. Um, sorry? Untrusted. Uh, yeah, untrusted. Yeah, thank you. A charger. And here, um, for the attacker, uh, there are less problems because uh, there are less filters in the propagation path of the parasitic signal. Um, an interesting uh, scenario would be to uh, um, have a malicious charger that will try to identify uh, the, the target. So sometimes uh, the cable shape is a, a good clue. And um, try different frequencies until uh, it can hear or catch the feedback of the keyword recognition. Uh, and uh, once he, the, the charger uh, um, hears the feedback or catches the feedback, it knows that uh, it was the right coupling frequency and uh, it can uh, exploit. So for the demonstration here, we didn't uh, build a malicious charger. Uh, instead, we uh, inject directly in the USB cable uh, between the charger and the target phone, so that our parasitic signal does not go through the filters of the charger and goes straight directly into the, the audio front end. So we see our setup, and uh, as always, uh, the keyword is recognized and uh, the command is uh, executed and interpreted by the, the phone, uh, the interpreter services. So the results of our experiments, we successfully injected voice commands uh, silently from the power network uh, through the, U the charging USB cable uh, to uh, the, the targeted phones. Uh, directly th uh, from the power network uh, through a computer when the phone is charging on a computer, and um, the audio signal is uh, processed correctly uh, by the remote servers and the command is executed. Uh, we didn't uh, notice uh, perturbations on the computer or the peripherals that were um, uh, collocated uh, with our target, and uh, <coughs> sorry, we also uh, didn't uh, really uh, see an impact of the different types of uh, USB cables, I mean uh, the charge only or the, the regular uh, USB cables for the injection. However, there are some main limitations that uh, make this attack uh, 
very high pr attacker profile uh, attack. Uh, the first one is the, the, the power network topology uh, and the, the different devices that are connected on the, the power network. Um, these criteria can change a lot uh, the um, modifications or the, um, uh, the perturbations of the parasitic signal uh, between the injection point and the target. The second point is the, all the filtering steps that we mentioned. So, um, in order to have a successful attack, uh, it's uh, mandatory to uh, characterize the chargers, uh, characterize the computer uh, filters, for example, uh, in order to be able to forge a signal that will be uh, uh, will have a, a good enough quality uh, to be interpreted by the voice interpreters. And the, the, the third point is the, the target phone, because uh, the phones are different and uh, the PCB characteristics are different. And the topology of the PCB can also play a, a, a huge role in the, the last uh, step of the attack, which is uh, a parasitic coupling uh, between the, the power uh, interface, which is the USB uh, port, and the, um, the audio interface, the, the entry stage of the audio front end. Okay, so just, just to conclude um, this presentation, we, just, we will just remember, uh, sum up the, the presentation. Um, we have been able to reach targets at a longer distance, uh, so the power network is a very good propagating structure for electromagnetic waves, and that's why we are using them for a power line communication system. Um, the power required to reach targets and to get signal uh, induced and ex well, uh, executed by uh, the device is less than 500 milliwatts, which is very uh, a small amount of power. The source can have a limited size, so basically uh, a malicious PLC uh, transceiver uh, is enough to do uh, the, 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 the test. Uh, it's also interesting because we can directly grab the power uh, for the, 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 the system uh, on the power network as we are connected to it. Um, there is no more need for headphones and basically all targets, uh, all devices that are charging may be reachable targets. <coughs> uh, just to compare the two techniques, so the talk of last year and, and uh, the talk of today, uh, last year we were focusing on the front door uh, coupling mode uh, the propagation path, uh, the attenuation in the, the propagation path was directly related to the free space attenuation. Um, we needed uh, the headphones to be connected to devices, um, and the required power were 40 watt for 2 meters and 200 watt for 5 meters. And the source size is depending on the type of the source and the distance we would like to, to, to reach targets uh, is a backpack or a car. Um, and targets were devices uh, outdoor uh, in the street or in crowded uh, area. And today we have been discussed, uh, discussing so the conjugated uh, propagation path where we were focusing on the, the backdoor coupling mode. Um, the propagation path is the power lines, the power network, which has a very uh, small attenuation uh, at the frequency we were working on. Um, the required power is 0.5 watt, and you were able to reach targets at a distance higher than 10 meters, which is much better than last year. And the source size as well uh, was a small PLC uh, charger, which is something interesting to, tar to, to, to target uh, indoor devices charging for the power network or a computer. Um, so we have shown, we discussed the front door and the back door coupling phenomena, and we have seen that we were able to remotely and silently inject voice commands into targets. Um, again, so we wanted to, to discuss the, 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 the threats of electromagnetic interferences as an efficient attack vector against IT systems. Uh, it's no more limited to denial of services attacks. Um, and there are more and more affordable as we may build uh, low cost with uh, software and defined radios. Um, we need to take this into risk analysis depending on the critical infrastructures we have to protect. 
And also, again, so carefully choose voice command settings as soon as we are able to, 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 to make very specific settings. Um, I will do it quickly. Uh, voice command inter interfaces are evolving, so default settings are uh, more and more secure. Uh, nevertheless, more activation options are provided, which may be new uh, attack uh, vectors to, to try to overcome some uh, limitations. Uh, voice recognition is now available on uh, uh, certain devices. The authentication and unlock is mandatory for some critical commands, uh, especially for privacy reasons. But it also increases the scope uh, of possible actions we may do on the, on the, on the devices. Users get used to it and will slowly move away from security toward usability. Um, and uh, also, the voice recogn recognitions cannot consider as mature enough today. Just for ending the talk, Jose will show you something about this. Yes. <coughs> hello, hello. Um, yes, uh, just a word on the, the voice recognition of authentication. Uh, we run uh, some uh, tests and uh, we have a little demo for you to end the talk. Um, so, uh, the voice recognition on the keyword is not really mature yet for authentication. Uh, the first point is that only the, the keywords are uh, analyzed and the, the keywords are generally short and uh, as we saw uh, they uh, cannot be personalized so it's always the same um, and the command uh, is not, uh, uh, the voice recognition is not per made on the command. Uh, so there is a, a simple audio replay attack example which we, we will show uh, we in a few seconds. And uh, the scenario is uh, you, the, the attacker will try to get voice samples from the victim. Uh, this can be quite easy to get someone uh, say OK and then in Google on the phone, for example. Um, and then uh, to forge the, the keyword and play it to unlock the phone. So it can be played uh, through uh, speakers, which we did uh, in the demo, but it, it could also be injecting with the two techniques that we presented uh, this year and last year. Um, I would like to mention that the editors uh, are, are aware of that uh, weakness, and they um, warn the user uh, that uh, someone with a similar voice or a recording of the voice uh, can unlock the device. <coughs> so trusted voice, uh, voice recognition for authentication is considered less secure than uh, a PIN or a password. So I hope the sound will be okay. So here the, the target phone is unlocked. I'm going to lock it. So now it's locked. It's prompting for the, the, the PIN code. And now with the second phone we are going to play No sound. Oh, sorry. Maybe we can do it. Okay. Like that. Okay, so for the, the trick, we recorded uh, my voice for the keyword and then uh, Shauki's voice for the, the command. Okay, Google. Open Gmail. And now the Gmail application is uh, open, but the phone is also uh, totally unlocked. So we do not recommend using uh, voice recognition for uh, unlocking the phones for now. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> As usual, uh, all the references are in the slides, so uh, if you have, are curious about the state of the art of the security of the voice commands, you can go on. And uh, our emails also, so if you want to reach us to ask questions or to do research together, uh, don't hesitate. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. 
<laughs> Sorry, me again. Hello. Hello. Uh, okay. Maybe it can be easier if I stand up. So Amanda Gabian from Trusty Labs. Yep. Since you mentioned the the talk was really interesting. And as we talk about uh, electromagnetic interferences, I was wondering if you perform some tests on uh, NFC enabled or BLE supporting devices. Some tests on, sorry, NFC? NFC enabled devices yeah. and those who support also BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy. Yes. So did, I mean, <laughs> concerning the result actually, because since it's a, a waves interferences, uh, you saw some demo about the um, voice recognition. Did you notice anything about these devices? Oh, because yeah. there are, I mean... Your question is not really related to uh, the, the, the voice uh, uh, recognition or... Actually, the... I mentioned at the beginning yes. about electromagnetic interferences yes. and waves. Okay, ah, so uh, yeah. So yeah. it was more on that... Uh, to see if you can um, make it make the scope larger and exploit using NFC features. Oh sure, uh, maybe we can talk a bit about the max spoof. Uh, oh, no, it will that, be nice. Thank you. You, you saw the, the max spoof attack? No, actually, I I didn't see the previous year. No, it's not. So. Uh, okay, so yeah, it's a, a Sami Cam car that uh, built a small device that was able to uh, induce an electromagnetic. Uh, or an electrical signal using uh, electromagnetic interferences into uh, max stripe readers. Yes. So th that was uh, this year, and it was uh, quite interesting research. Okay. So. So the the, yes, the the, the 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 answer is yes. It's an interesting research topic, and it might be. Um, uh, I think we can do a lot of things with uh, uh, intentional electromagnetic interferences. So actually, NFC enabled phone may be uh, more vulnerable? Um, we, we cannot provide you an answer about that topic because we didn't work specially on NFC enabled devices. Okay. We have been testing devices in order to, to understand what are the threats for uh, the audio voice interface. Uh, we also have been testing devices against electromagnetic threats. And it's uh, an undergoing work today, so we could not provide very specific results. But we, as I said, Jose, we can just discuss this a few later if you want. Okay, it will be nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there is a question in the back. Thank you. Uh, firstly, thank you for the amazing uh, demonstration. It was fantastic. I have a question about, say, if you wanted to have a booth with multiple uh, USB chargers, would you need separate uh, couplers, or is it possible just to broadcast through multiple cables at the one time on repeat, mm. you know, cycling through Apple, Android, and so mm. forth? Uh. Um, in fact, we have been working a lot on the power network and we have seen that depending on the type of the charger and devices connected to the power network, the signal will be uh, degraded, so disturbed by the, by the impedances of devices. Um, but if there are several devices, we need only to characterize uh, many chargers and then understand which one may be used for each device and then try to define a specific coupling frequency and also using some statistical techniques to target specific adapters on the power network. So the limitations of the topology, as I said, Jose, is something very, uh, very hard to overcome. But there are some techniques we have been working on in order to overcome those challenges. I think it's time for the coffee break if there are no more questions. And we, could, we can I just stop up. Sorry. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, thank well, you. Thank you very much. Thank you.